welcome and a good time of day to you in your time zone and a special welcome and a good morning to Laurent P who is joining us from Boston today and is currently a vice president of product management at SmartBear and will introduce us to managing requirements and collaboration in Jira with behavior driven development or BDD for short. Laurent has been thinking about and working on advanced testing techniques since his PhD in the 90s, so for quite some time now. And immediately before SmartBear, he co-founded HipTest, which was acquired by SmartBear in, in 2018 and became Cucumber Studio, which was and is the leading collaboration platform for BDD used in more than 125,000 projects. So few people more qualified than him to tell us about this topic. He's a regular speaker at illustrious academic and professional conferences, and we are very happy that he joins us on a hum humble soapbox today to share his experience with us. All the more so because joining us, he's joining us from the SmartBear user conference, SmartBear Connect 2020, where he just minutes ago was part of a panel talking about innovations in Atlassian Jira integrations. So uh, the right time and the right place. Um, but because he has, to, has a hard cut after 45 minutes, without further ado, over to you, Laurent, and uh, welcome again. And uh, we're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, uh, Jorg. Thank you very much for uh, this introduction. And thanks for having me. That's uh, really my, my pleasure to have the opportunity uh, uh, to uh, present you uh, collaboration in Jira with BDD and also have this uh, uh, live discussion. So uh, let me go straight to the uh, agenda. Uh, so I think I, I'll take about 30 minutes for uh, this, uh, this presentation. And then so hopefully we'll have a, a, a live uh, Q&A session and discussion for the remaining uh, 15, uh, 15 minutes. So three parts for uh, this presentation. Uh, first, I, I just want to get back to the to the why of, of BDD uh, and and why it matters, especially now as more and more teams uh, ac accelerate their uh, product cycles. So software becomes continuous. Uh, the way we test, the way we develop, uh, is changing. And, and what is the role of BDD in that? Then I will. Uh, focus on uh, what really BDD is and what is not. There is a lot of also misconception about BDD. Uh, so I will focus on uh, the BDD approach in Jira. And to uh, end up this presentation, uh, I thought it, it may be uh, great to share with you how one of the Cucumber team uh, work and operate. So the Cucumber for Jira team uh, that deploy uh, uh, up to 10 times a day uh, using BDD, uh, using its own product, uh, Cucumber for Jira. So that, that may give you a, an idea of how a very high performing team uh, work today inside Jira using, uh, using the BDD and its own, uh, its own product. So um, that's about drinking our own champagne, as I like to say, as I come from France, uh, rather than uh, we eat our own dog food. So uh, software, becomes, uh, software development becomes continuous. Uh, just a quick words about that. So we, uh, we did a survey at SmartBear uh, last year about uh, the, the product cycles. How long, how often do you release? Is it yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily, or multiple times a day? And what's interesting uh, as we, we run this survey uh, every year is to see the evolution, the fact that uh, during the, the past three years, uh, many people have accelerated the cadence. But what's also interesting to note is that uh, when we look at where these teams thought they would be in two years, and we compare uh, uh, after two years where they are, they are not where they thought they would be. So we also have a lot of ambitions usually when it comes to uh, accelerate product cycles uh, and release cycles. But then uh, uh, when we see all the challenges that these teams face, like uh, changing culture, uh, new dev approach, uh, new, uh, the, the need to uh, disrupt testing or uh, define new ways of uh, handling QA, 
Um, there are so many challenges that usually uh, they, they cannot achieve or, or meet their goal. And I think that's where uh, BDD can, uh, can, can be helpful. So at Smartbear, we are not different uh, from, the, from the market. Uh, so I just mentioned here a couple of our products, but we still have products that we, uh, so we have different teams, different level of uh, maturity, if you want, and different uh, approach to development and testing. So we have product uh, that release uh, every quarter, like test complete, so QI, ready API, the front enterprise. These products today are in a transformation to uh, accelerate the product cycles to once a month. We also have products that uh, deploy today every two weeks, like Zephyr for Jira or Swagger Hub. These products today are in a transformation to uh, uh, release uh, or to deploy uh, continuously. So I know, for example, for Zephyr for Jira, if you have uh, uh, teams or, or people here in, in this panel that uh, use the tool, at, so that's the goal for the end of the year. By the end of the year, we want to be able to deploy uh, once a day in production for the cloud. And then we have teams that do continuous deployment, like Cucumber, Test Management for Jira, CBT, and, uh, and Lone Ninja. So these are just some of the examples, but different levels of maturity, different approach. And what I, I've seen is that the more we accelerate, uh, the more uh, teams tend to use uh, BDD. So I, I, will, um, I will get back to that later. Just before, uh, I, I would like to share with you one, one key question for me, which is, okay, that's fine. We are all in a race. We all want to accelerate the pace of releases, but why do we want to do it? Uh, what is the reason? Is it because we want to do more development, have more stuff done, release more features? Uh, the answer is, is no. The, the, the reason why we want to accelerate uh, the pace of releases is um, because we want a closer feedback loop. So we want to, uh, short on the feedback loop between I got an ID, I developed, implement a small increment, deploy it in production so I can get feedback, gather data, and iterate from there. So I can start iteration two with the learning, the findings from uh, iteration one. So it's not about doing more development. It's about being able uh, as a team to really um, break a user story or an ID into a very small chunk that the team will be able to uh, iterate on very quickly, learn, and then uh, and then move on. So it's about the speed of learning and ultimately about uh, ab about innovation. The faster these teams are about to go through this cycle, and usually the more uh, they are able to uh, to innovate. So it's not about doing more development. Once again, it's about doing better software develop about developing better better feature um, and, and one thing i uh, i also did realize when uh, i look at the, the three different categories of uh, of product teams we have uh, at smart Bear, uh, the more we accelerate so you know between three months to two weeks release and then uh, continuous deployment and the less test management as we know it so test management as the process of uh, understanding requirements, uh, building test plan, and writing test cases, planning all the, 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 the test activities, keeping track of test execution, and so on. All these different activities of, of test management, the more we accelerate, the more uh, they are disrupted. So if we look, for example, at the teams um, like Cucumber, Load Ninja, <coughs> that deploy, as I said earlier, continuously in production. These teams, uh, they don't do test management. These teams, uh, they have no testers. They have no test plans, no manual test plans. Everything is automated, so no, no uh, uh, manual test. These teams, they use BDD, right? They use BDD as part of these very short iterations uh, to make sure that they create alignment between all the stakeholders and, and then they can um, define the right small increment of software uh, that will deliver some value for the users and they will be able to learn about so they can uh, better uh, iterate. So the, the job to be done, if you want, um, really change between, I have a QA team uh, who is in charge of uh, assessing the release readiness, 
That's the goal of this team. That's the job to be done. Uh, and this is changing to, I have no more QA team, but I have a, a development team or a scrum team with or without uh, uh, testers, by the way. And the job to be done of this team is to build, to deploy, and to maintain the right software. So that's a completely different mission. And, and that's where I see BDD, Behavior Driven Development, as the, as the future of, of test management, when you think about it, uh, and, and the job to be done that also evolved to uh, developing the right feature. And this is exactly, I would say, the, the mission or the outcome of BDD. If you do it the right way, I, I get, to back, uh, get, get uh, back to that in a second. Uh, if you do BDD right, it will help you and your team uh, to do the, 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 the right thing. So, uh, having done this, uh, this uh, short uh, introduction, let's talk now about uh, uh, BDD uh, in Jira, so the BDD approach and how it can help you, as I said, uh, to break down your story into a very small increment of value uh, that you will be uh, able to, to, to learn from. And, and there is one example I, I, uh, I really like uh, about the, the value of having the, the short feedback loop. And I'm sure for, for you, uh, the German audience, that will speak, speak a lot because that's an example about car. So let's say you have two cars, right? One that has the ESP, electronic stability program, the other, uh, other car that doesn't. So you are in a, you have an appointment, you're late, uh, there is the road, it's not uh, straightforward, there is a lot of curves. So it can be dangerous, uh, which car do you take? And usually the answer I get is, well, I take the car with the ESP uh, because it's safer, right? I have the electronic stability program. So yes, I got it, but why is it safer? The difference between the two cards uh, and what the ESP is about, it's about feedback loop. Uh, the way it works is it monitors the rotating speed of the wheels uh, multiple times per second, by the way, and each time it detects a loss of traction, uh, it will automatically uh, apply the brakes so it can steer the, the car, the, the direction uh, where the drivers uh, intend to go. So the difference between going to the ditch, having an accident and not, uh, is the, the speed of feedback loop. In one case, I have multiple uh, feedback loops per second and I can react accordingly. That's with the ESP. In the other case, uh, I don't. Software project, guys, is exactly the same thing. So it's all about feedback loop, having the opportunity to learn and then uh, be flexible and, and react uh, accordingly. So this is what, how we, we present and, and promote uh, BDD at, uh, at Cucumber. Uh, so first, let, let me tell you that BDD is not about test automation, right? It's one of the most misconceptions about BDD. I use Cucumber open. Uh, I automate my test using uh, uh, Gherkin and Cucumber, so I do BDD. No, no, no. BDD is not about uh, test automation. There are three activities. Automation is one of them, but you'll see that there is a big difference between automation of the living documentation, so automation of the the BDD scenarios and test automation itself. So three activities, uh, the discovery, the formulation and uh, the automation. So first we start by the user story. So that's the, can be a big user story or an epic, uh, something the, the product team uh, want, wants the, the dev team to work on. The first step will be uh, the discovery phase. So that's the, I would say the most important one. Uh, if you don't do formulation, if you don't do automation, that's fine. You won't have the full benefits of BDD, but if you directly jump into automation, then you will miss for sure most of the value of doing behavior driven development. So discovery phase is uh, to me the, the, the most important one. Having the, the, the three amigos, so we have the product guys together with the UX, uh, we have the, the dev team, and the testers, if you have uh, any tester in your, in your team. So the, the, these guys uh, will discuss the user story. 
and, and break it down uh, into smaller pieces uh, using examples. So during these uh, example mapping sessions, I will show you some uh, example after. Uh, we typically have the user story. From this user story, we define the rules. What are the different rules? One or multiple examples by rules. And also we keep track of, we capture all the questions that the, the, the team has and has not been able to uh, uh, give an answer to. So uh, usually when we leave a discovery session, we have created a, a shared understanding of the different use cases, what we want, what are the different behaviors that we want to uh, address as part of uh, this implementation, together with the unknown, what we still don't know, uh, but at least we have raised the question, so we know that, that we don't know. Then the, the second step is the formulation phase. So this is usually where uh, most of the people uh, start with. So I will take uh, example by example, and uh, do the formulation, so write my Gherkin scenario. So I will use the given when then syntax, the Gherkin syntax, in order to uh, create my scenario. And then, and that's where uh, most of the team also start a BDD journey with automation. They use uh, Cucumber, Open, or Specflow, any flavor of, uh, of these frameworks, Gherkin frameworks. <clears throat> and uh, you automate the step definition and then you can run uh, using Cucumber, you, uh, you test. So these are the three activities. They should be done in that order. I start by the discovery, I create the shared understanding. So BDD is first about collaboration, not automation. Then I do the formulation, uh, and then we have the automation. So, so first misconception that we have addressed, BDD is not about uh, automation, but about collaboration. The second one is, uh, about the formulation itself. Who writes the BDD, who should write the BDD scenario? Well, th there is no one size fits all, for sure. Uh, so I've seen multiple examples and some of them working, others not. Usually what we promote at Cucumber is that the developer should uh, uh, do the formulation, so should write the BDD scenario, because uh, he's the one that has the, um, the cognitive gap. So the product owner, the, the, the UX and the product guys, they are supposed to know pretty well what, what is the business problem that we want to solve and um, what are the different behaviors that we are expecting for the future. So he has an understanding of what he, he expects as, as an output. Uh, for the developer, he has to learn that. So the discovery phase is here to create this shared understanding and is here for the dev team to learn. Um, but if the developer then is the one that write the scenarios and the, the business stakeholders validate it, that's far more efficient than having the uh, business uh, stakeholders or maybe the product owner writing the scenarios, giving it to the developers there will still be maybe some misconceptions. So yeah, we prefer generally uh, to have the, the developer uh, writing the, the scenarios, but that's a recommendation. If they are, if this is other people, testers or POs, that can also, uh, also work. Uh, ju just keep in mind, uh, as I said, the cognitive gap. Who is the people in the room that has uh, the most to learn uh, about, the, about this feature? And I think this is the one who should uh, write uh, the BDD scenario. So um, let's uh, look at how this uh, happened in, uh, in, in Jira. So typically when I look at the, the Cucumber uh, for Jira team, so they use Jira as a, as a tool to uh, manage their project and, and track the, the progress. So they, use the, they have this uh, Kanban board. Typically uh, we will pick up one user story that's the team uh, before uh, the team work on it. And we will, um, uh, during the grooming session, the example mapping session, uh, we will create, as I shared, the, 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 as I said, sorry, the, the shared understanding. So that's typically uh, an example of um, uh, example map. So we have the story. Uh, we have then for this story, uh, that's the output of the example mapping session, define multiple rules, in blue, then in green, multiple um, examples, one or multiple examples for each rule. 
And then we have the questions, the things we, we still uh, uh, don't know and that we will have to, uh, uh, to figure out and, and find uh, an answer for. So uh, usually it lasts between um, 30 to 30 minutes to half an hour for the, for the feature. The great value of this is not just that we uh, create the shared understanding between all the stakeholders, but we also break down a user story into very small uh, increments of software. And that's where I've seen most of the development teams struggling with, agile teams struggling, struggling with, and that's the, usually one of the biggest difference gap between the teams that release every month or every two weeks and the teams that uh, deploy continuously. When you deploy continuously, when every single commit goes to production, usually you are good at breaking down a user story into a very small task. So, you know, user story should be uh, invest or so independent, uh, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. Uh, usually the team that have, are doing this uh, uh, very well, they are the one that can uh, deploy uh, continuously in, uh, in production. So for, for this, we use Miro, and Miro is integrated with Jira, so we can connect the, the example map with the, uh, with the user story. And then uh, inside uh, Jira, uh, so we use Cucumber for Jira, we, we can uh, create the formulate, so that's phase two. We can, once we have created the, this shared understanding between all the stakeholders, we can formulate the, the BDD scenario, so create the given when then. So we take one example and we will uh, uh, refine it using this, uh, this syntax. So in this case here, that's uh, one of the feature of Cucumber for Jira. Uh, that, uh, so there is a, we have defined the rules that enable us to define what should be the uh, status of a feature file, depending on the status of the different scenarios. So for example, what you can see here, uh, what the team has defined, so it was not part of this session, but uh, when we have um, uh, a failing scenario, so let's say scenario, scenario one passed and scenario two failed, then the feature overall status should be failed. When we have two scenarios that passed, uh, then the overall status for the feature should be passed and so on and so forth. So, when we want to, de to uh, define what should be the, the status of the feature and how should we display it based on the different uh, test results of the scenarios, we have the discussion, as I said, 30 minute discussion. We create a shared understanding. We can then refine it uh, and create the BDD scenarios and use that to drive uh, the, the, the development. So two ways for the formulation, you can do that in Jira. So in that case, that's, uh, that was the example. Uh, or you can do that directly if that's the developer uh, who uh, will create the BDD scenarios. He will use his own ID and store the feature file in Git. Whatever the way uh, you, uh, however you uh, formulate the scenarios, the, the source of truth should be Git. So here, what you have here will, the, will end up in Git. Same thing if uh, the developer directly uses ID for the formulation. So next step, uh, we have defined the scenarios. We have used the scenarios to drive the development. So the feature has been implemented. Uh, the different rules that we've seen, the different scenarios have been uh, implemented. And then what we can see here, so I, I think that's for, yeah, I should have picked up the same feature, but that's another feature. Uh, what we can see here is that all the, uh, the different examples are passed. So the status of the feature is passed. So I can see directly in Jira that the feature has been implemented. The feature is passed and, and the feature, if I do continuous deployment, which is the case for uh, Cucumber for Jira, the feature uh, should be uh, in production. So the reason why we say that's a living documentation is because Unlike any wiki, Word document, or uh, uh, Confluence uh, documentation, this one will always be up to date because it has been generated from uh, the BDD the scenarios that are executed as part of the CI CD pipeline. So, if uh, getting back to the feature overall feature execution status, uh, getting back to the different scenarios we've seen, uh, I can see here that each of these example, so a failing scenario 
all scenario passed, uh, we have a pending scenario. Uh, based on all these different uh, examples, what should be the behavior of the, of the, of the feature and how does this, the feature now behave in production? I can see that uh, right now it's, it's green. So this, is, this reflects the, the, the feature of the, the behavior of the feature uh, in, in production. So I can see uh, in the living documentation that is connected directly to Git and the CI. I can see the, uh, the status for my feature, but also all the other features uh, of my living documentation. So that's another view. I can browse my living documentation, see all the different feature files uh, that have been created and the one that are in production that have um, passed through the CI CD have been executed by the CI CD and that are passed. So all the different features uh, that are live uh, in production. So personally, as a uh, would say business stakeholder, I used to be developer, but I don't develop anymore. That's what I use to track the progress of the team uh, and, and used to uh, understand what is in production and how does the, the, the product uh, behave in production. That's the, the, the source of truth for me, uh, the product uh, knowledge base. And, and the reason why it's the source of truth is because as I said, it's connected to Git, right? Th there is a huge difference between a user story in Jira and a BDD scenario or a feature file. Um, the, the user story in Jira is transient. So you can see here, for example, this feature, you can have a feature uh, uh, scenario linked to a user story, but User story is transient. Once it's done, um, then we, we, we can throw it away in the, in the trash bin. We, we don't need it anymore. Uh, what we really need is how the, once the feature is in production, what are the different behaviors? What are the different features for my product? And that's what the living documentation will, will give you. That's what all the BDD scenarios uh, will, will give you. They are the knowledge base, they are connected to Git and they are uh, connected to the, to the CI. The way we use uh, uh, Kanban board, the way we use user stories is just for planning purpose. So it's, it's transient. And sometimes people tend to um, uh, be confused between user story, BDD scenarios. They are very different artifacts, different life cycle. Uh, a user story will, modify or will, uh, uh, and will um, uh, lead to the creation, for example, of a scenario, a new scenario, or will lead to the creation of a user of a feature file, or may lead to the, uh, even to the modification, the update of two scenarios. We have a new user story that will modify the scenarios of uh, the, the behavior of, of two examples, so of two BDD scenarios. Um, but at the end of the day, what is in production will be the new behavior for these two scenarios, not the user story uh, itself. So very important to, to uh, distinguish uh, the, the two. So BDD scenario is not uh, a user story. So that's very high level, the, 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 the flow uh, BDD uh, in Jira. I would like now to share very quickly before we start the, the live uh, discussion and Q&A session. Um, a bit more about the way the Cucumber team operates because uh, BDD is an approach, right? It's not a tool, it's not a process. Uh, you can do if you want just BDD with sticky notes and, and, and use Cucumber open, that, that would be fine. Uh, but but we, we have to see the whole picture, right? It's about people, it's about the process, the approach, and it's about the, the, the tools. So when I look at uh, the Cucumber team, we have today four uh, uh, micro teams uh, for these four micro teams that work on the different cucumber pro uh, products we have no testers so there is no gatekeeper between uh, the developer between the commit and and the production the only gatekeeper is the ci cd that will execute the test and if there is uh, one test failing then uh, it will not be deployed but if the all the execution all the tests pass then it will be uh, deployed automatically in, uh, in production we use the OKR approach, so uh, objective and key results for uh, driving the team. Uh, I won't have time to explain more and talk more about that today. <clears throat> but in terms of uh, process and approach, what's important here is that the team use 
BDD and TDD. So BDD, uh, the, the three activities that I did explain and, 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 and uh, also give uh, an example about, they are here to ensure we develop the right thing, that we do the right next increment of software, right? Uh, TDD and all the then the, the, the unit tests that we, you will create, TDD will help you uh, make sure that you develop the right, you have the right design for your code, and then you will create all the unit tests, integration tests that you need. They will be the safety net, uh, the one that will ensure the correctness of your application. So with BDD, you won't try to solve the functional, the, the, the old functional testing uh, uh, problem that is making sure my product works. It's, the goal is not to answer, answer to the correctness for BDD. The goal is to answer to I'm doing the right thing. You remember the, the change in job to be done. I want to make sure I'm, I'm working on the right increment of software and I have a shared understanding with the, with the business. So th that's the goal of BDD. And then TDD and all the other testing activities that you do after that when you uh, do your implementation, they are here to ensure the correctness of the application. Whatever level of uh, acceptance test or uh, unit test integration test we talk about, everything is automated. That's what enables the team to deploy five to 10 times a day in, uh, in production. This is the definition of done for, for the team. And here again, that's something very important. So in that order, the team will, uh, once we have done run the, the discovery and for formulation phase. The team will automate the BDD scenarios. So every step that are in the given when and then part, they will be automated. Um, before we start the implementation, so we first automate the test. They fail, obviously, because there is no automation. Then we write the unit test, so we do TDD. We refactor the legacy code if we have to. And only after that, we start the implementation of the feature. So usually people do that in the other order. They start implementation, and then uh, they write the Cucumber test, BDD given when then, uh, to check that the implementation meet the requirements. That's not BDD. It's another way to write you functional tests. Uh, but that, that's not BDD. And if you do that, you will miss most of the value of BDD. Then we, once we have implemented, we write the integration test, run them, do exploratory testing, and done mean for these four micro teams, done mean the product, the, the increment of software, the examples, the BDD examples we have implemented, they are uh, in production. So this is what uh, done means for, for the team. The, the other thing I, I wanted to, to share with you is the, the test pyramid. Uh, there, there can be multiple flavors and there is no one particular shape of the pyramid that everyone has to uh, adopt, but there are at least some, some good practices. And here, when you look at the, the number of tests and the distribution of tests for uh, the Cucumber team, so uh, the team uh, has uh, more than 7,000 tests, you can see that just 235 are end-to-end -end tests. So that go from the UI to the back end. Uh, then we have, I think, 1,300 plus front-end tests uh, distributed between acceptance test, integration test, and uh, uh, front-end unit tests. And then we have all the back-end tests, all the, the, the unit uh, tests for, for, for the back-end. All these 7,000 tests, 7 plus thousand tests, are executed in 20 minutes. And that's long. So the team is working on improving that, reducing the, the, the feedback loop between the test and the and um, uh, the, the developers, the commit, uh, the execution of the test and the, and the commit. So yeah, the goal is to get back to five minutes. That was the, the case uh, before, so it's still long. But you see the, the ability to get such a quick feedback loop is because we just have, uh, we have the, the, the right level of test. And the BDD scenarios that are part of the end-to-end the -end test, or sometimes they are distributed because we may want to, uh, implement the given part of a BDD scenario given uh, in the, um, at the uh, let's say, API layer. The when part of the scenario, which is the action we want to uh, we want to check, uh, do it at the UI layer. We want to be as close as the, the experience of the user. 
and the, the then part, so the check itself, uh, depending on what is the check, we may want to check directly in the backend. So the D, that in the DB, uh, I don't know, a data has been created, or if it's about a message being displayed to the user, we, we may use uh, here again Selenium and the UI layer to uh, to implement the, the, the check. So Cucumber BDD doesn't mean that you have to automate everything at the UI layer, no. Uh, just choose what is right for you based on the goal of the, of the test itself. And, and that will be, uh, I think, the, the last slide. Uh, that, that's the learning loop, how the learning loop looks like for uh, the Cucumber for, G, for Jira team. So the team use uh, Jira software, as I mentioned, uh, Miro for uh, integrated with Jira for um, running the, the example mapping session. So for your information, the team, the Cucumber team is also working on a uh, example mapping tool directly integrated in the, the BDD, the Cucumber platform. So that's something that should come uh, in the coming months. Uh, and then we use Cucumber for Jira for the formulation, Cucumber Open uh, for the, for the uh, automation part, TDD, uh, obviously for the development, uh, CICD, the team uses Jenkins, uh, for CI, uh, for the CI CD, if we have tests that uh, need to be run, Selenium tests on multiple platforms, then we can use uh, cross browser testing and then we deploy in production. When it's deployed uh, and the CI CD has executed all the tests, we, uh, we can publish the living documentation. So that's what I, I showed you before. We can see the, all the, the feature files with the, uh, the latest result of the coming from the CI. And obviously we use also many other tools. That's just uh, some examples I'm sharing here, but to monitor the, to monitor the production and that everything uh, uh, goes well for, uh, for the platform and for our, our users. <laughs> so yeah, don't forget, don't jump directly into the formulation and the automation. Think about the discovery and also the, all the value of the, of the living documentation. Uh, I can definitely share some, uh, some great examples of, uh, of uh, usage uh, and, and leverage of this uh, living documentation. Uh, I, I don't know, Jörg, if we will be able to share the slides, but if that's the case, I can defi definitely then share the, all these, uh, these links. Uh, I think they, are, they can be valuable. So uh, that, that's, um, they, they will point to uh, some of our most popular blog posts, how to start and scale BDD, uh, BDD is not test automation, as I mentioned. Uh, introduction to example mapping, which is really the, the, one of the key activity of BDD that will help you get 100% of the value, not just uh, 12 or 20% of the, of the value. And then the question about who writes, uh, who should write the, the, the BDD scenario. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, it, for, uh, that's it for the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. And we have a question from Marcos, which you may answer while I promote everybody to the panel. Um, the question is, refactoring legacy code is optional or mandatory? When a test fails because there is no code, how, why do you decide to refactor? This implies that the code that has been delivered before was not good enough. So it's definitely not uh, mandatory. Uh, but uh, when we um, when we have to write on a, a new to work sorry on a, on a new feature, uh, it's always we should also always see that as the opportunity to uh, refactor or fix uh, part of the code that were not uh, great before. So uh, I'm thinking, for example, about the we have the Zephyr for Jira team that, as I said, is in this transition to accelerate the pace of releases. Nine months ago, this team was um, releasing once a quarter. Now it's one, once every uh, two weeks. Uh, that means the, the way the code has been created before, uh, when we look at all the, the, the code base and, and the legacy, uh, is not suitable for continuous deployment. So every time the team uh, work on a new feature, for example, uh, comment us at the step level, they they take this as an opportunity to refactor the way uh, the step handles 
making sure that moving forward, we have the right level of unit tests for this uh, particular area of the code, which is not always the case. Uh, so next time that next time we'll have to refactor or, or modify this code, uh, we will um, we will have more confidence in our safety net and in our test. So that can be uh, one example. One reason why you may want to refactor is because the current code that you will modify doesn't have the right level of uh, the right level of uh, of test. Okay, um, so you are no, now all part of the panel, uh, and Laurent, I will just end your screen sharing. Yeah. So that we can see everyone, hopefully. Um, yeah, uh, and now you can just, uh, if you want to, um, jump into the discussion, unmute yourself, start your video, and ask your questions. Um, just one question from my side, um, Cucumber for Jira. Uh, it runs across all installations, so it's also available for for cloud and, and uh, not only for server and data center. So right now it's just available for cloud and it integrates okay. with Zephyr for Jira. So uh, you can, if you wanna, if you use Zephyr for Jira and wanna do BDD, it extends uh, Zephyr for Jira, so it can be used standalone or together with Z4J. Uh, and the plan is by the end of the year to also implement the implement it for server and, and VC. But we started with uh, cloud first. Okay. Um, question here, Bernhard here. Uh, I think, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. we can. Yeah. Uh, I think hey, BDD is a very good framework, very good idea behind of it. And one question came to my mind is, um, going away from the today's standard practice to develop first code and then do the testing, um, how would you introduce, how would you start change into BDD developed meant? How so, would you start, how uh, would you introduce it to a team um, to get used to it and yeah, accepting it over so, time? Yeah, so there they are, uh, many ingredients, I would say, that, that are uh, necessary for making a great recipe. Uh, the, the, the first one is, uh, and that's how I, I led the, the transition with uh, the Zephyr for Jira team, is making sure we have a, a common understanding and goals about the, uh, the acceleration of the pace of releases. If we are fine with when release every quarter, there is no need to change the process because that was working well, you know, but we have some business needs and there have been a, a acknowledgement of that. So we have, we know we have to release once a day. We, we, we need to go to continuous deployment. So there is a buy-in from all the team. Okay, fine. We know what we have to do, why we have, why we have to, to, um, to do that. Then the question was, how do we get there? Because I, I can't continue to um, manage my test as I was doing before. I can't continue to have everything uh, manual. So the team started to look for solution for a new problem that they were facing. They were not facing the problem before. So first we changed the paradigm. They are asking new questions and that's how I, I started with the, the BDD journey with them. So the good news with BDD is uh, you can start with one feature, right? Uh, you, you, can do a, you can do an experiment. Just start with uh, so one user story. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend to um, work with uh, people. So one, just one team first, not big bang approach. Uh, work with uh, consultants or, or coaches or whoever has also great experience about BDD. So someone that will be able to help the team during the uh, example mapping session to break down because that's the key for the success, breaking down one user story into very small pieces. Um, and when that's done and the developers had the discussion early on with the product guys and, and they start development implementation with a, a clear vision of what should be the behavior of the feature, that changes everything. Um, so yeah, we, we need, people that are trained to BDD in order to do it right. Uh, so my, my recommendation would be uh, either pick someone in your company or outside uh, if you need to. And, um, and then, yeah, uh, for test automation, same thing. There are uh, multiple 
uh, ways and techniques to uh, implement well your you BDD scenario. Not everything should be at the UI layer, as I said before. So there are some training courses. We, we, uh, we provide a lot of material that are publicly available uh, in our um, uh, blog and we have tutorials. We have also Cucumber School video that can help you uh, get started. And once we have first success, which is what we did, then we, uh, we start with another team. So the, uh, the approach that I really like is we start small with uh, one feature, one team. We, uh, we show the success and once we are able to show success, then we can scale BDD with uh, other teams. But apart from that, I've, I've um, seen top-down uh, implementation, big bang approach, they all failed. They all failed. So the, the, you, you need the buy-in obviously from the, from the developers, uh, the, the PO and the, and the testers. Does okay. that answer the question, Bernard? Yeah, thank you very much. Good answer. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. And with that, it's 10 to 7. Laurent, so, I, I, yeah. yeah, you have to leave, yeah. I guess. Thank you very Are much you again too? for this. Uh, and have a nice... Uh, user conference. I will uh, give out the link to the user conference after you, after this uh, so yeah, that everybody can join you. Uh, let me just share my screen. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. It was a, a real pleasure. Yeah. See you around. Take, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So let me just share that. Yeah, I think you should see my screen now. Let me, can I start the presentation? Hopefully, yeah. So, um, Smart Bear Connect is happening right now. So it's, it's today and tomorrow. It started around uh, five um, and will be today and tomorrow again. Uh, normally that's uh, the annual Smart Bear User Conference in Boston. Um, this year, like all conferences, it's virtual and therefore it's also free. So you can join free of charge under that link. Uh, and there are quite a few very interesting presentations about um, Smart Bear behavior driven development, test management and everything that Smart Bear does, which is quite a lot. Um, just a reminder of our own series of events, um, our Monday night specials. The next one next week will be effective project tracking in Jira with profiles by Dyser. Uh, who will be here and we are and that just as a reminder and Michaela, please uh, forgive me. I forgot the slide. Um, we are partnering with no cabin fever today. So no dot cabin hyphen fever dot today where you can find, can find all your, all our presentations and a talk every day at 4 PM. So if you are interested, no dot cabin, hyphen fever dot today. I will include all the links that um, Laurent showed in his uh, slides and uh, the link to no cabin fever today in the show notes. Um, I will basically cut the video tonight. Uh, so it should be online tomorrow. Um, and that's it for me today. <laughs>